Well, hello, beautiful people. My name is Bridget, and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having an awesome day. And today's video is about makeup brands that I haven't personally tried. I feel like okay so I did this video like a year ago like at least over a year ago and it was really interesting to see what you guys haven't tried as well because there's so much makeup in this community there is so many brands there are so many products always being punched out in our faces that I feel like sometimes I get stuck to certain brands I already know and trust and I don't try new things or for one reason or another there's certain brands that I just haven't tried so today I'm going over those brands that I haven't tried as well as probably like why I guess I haven't tried these brands so without any further ado let's go ahead and get into today's video all right guys as always all makeup on this channel is cruelty free so all the products that I'm mentioning in today's video well, I guess brands that I'm mentioning in today's video and today's video is sponsored by life elements so let me tell you a little bit about their CBD bath bombs so their CBD bath bombs are specialty bath bombs which are really good if you have a lot of stressed muscles or you need soothing skin they're anti-inflammatory and really great for helping relieve stress helping relieve pain and pain in joints and relax muscles also give you a really good sleep because they're really relaxing so you just right before bed it's perfect so they have really good ingredients in here coming from Mexico and South America from a tree that helps reduce scarring helps soothe burns and things like that so if you have anything wrong or kind of inflamed on your skin these bath bombs really help you these bath bombs are vegan and cruelty free as always so if you're interested in something anti-inflammatory vegan and really good for your skin I will leave them linked to the top of the description box and thank you guys so much for sponsoring today's video Okay, so let's start talking about brands that I haven't tried and why. So the first one I'm talking about is Melt Cosmetics. I did receive a Melt Cosmetics stick lipstick in my Bijou Beauty box. Like, not last month, but the month before, but I haven't used it because I'm not a stick lipstick person. So I've never actually tried a Melt Cosmetics product. Now I, full disclosure, am interested in trying Melt Cosmetics. However, I find that the things I really want to try from them are their eyeshadow palettes, not the stacks. And it is really, really hard to find the eyeshadow palettes on like Mercari or Poshmark or somewhere a little bit cheaper because they're kind of expensive full price. So like $59 for a palette. The ones that I want are limited edition, which is like the Gemini and like pretty much all their eyeshadow palettes. The green one too was really beautiful. And then they have the Smoke Sessions one too. I know you can find the Smoke Sessions one still, but the other two are so, so hard to find. I think it was called 21. But just their palettes are so beautiful. I really want to try them, but I just haven't because they were really expensive at the time they came out. I couldn't afford them, and now I can't really find them for a cheaper price. But that's just my reasoning. I will eventually try Melt Cosmetics. Next up is Zoeva, and this is a brand I've been like lusting over forever and I don't know why I think it's a packaging thing for Zoeva every time I see something release the colors are boring and it's not like super interesting but I'm still like dying on the inside because it's just beautiful and stunning to me they are now in Ulta so if I see it in person I definitely want to see it in person before I actually buy Zoeva just because the colors do look really boring I want to make sure they do like at least look like wearable colors you know, when you're in the store and you can see them. So I will try Zoeva. The palettes usually are like 20 something dollars which is great and I will try them but like I need to see it in person first. That's the reason I haven't bought Zoeva. Next up is Natasha Denona and one word money. Natasha Denona is so expensive. I keep thinking about buying those little small ones like that little small green one that just came out but you guys keep telling me the formula is not the same for big palettes two or smaller ones than even like one of the big palettes I saw Bailey Sarian months and months ago before she blew up reviewing and said it wasn't that good so now I'm like is it really worth a hundred and something dollar price tag? Probably not so I haven't tried Natasha Denona. The next brand is CYO and that's because I don't even know where you can buy this brand. I know you can probably order it online, of course you can order online, you can order everything online, but this is a brand that doesn't really come to mind of like, oh let me place a CYO order and I've never seen it in person, so that's the reason I haven't tried CYO. Something that reminds me of the brand CYO is the brand Catrice, which I also haven't tried. Catrice is sold in Ulta's. But like when you see the little display, it doesn't really call to me and the only thing I've ever heard good things about from Chris Treese that I've heard like people raving about is their foundation. And the foundation range honestly is not my favorite in the world. So I haven't tried Catrice or CYO. Both of them apparently have really good foundations and I want to try both the foundations because I love, love a good foundation. But I haven't tried either one of them. They just don't really intrigue me or spark like something inside me to make me want to go out and get it you know but they're both like semi affordable I think the next brand is P Louise and that's because shipping from overseas seemed like a lot for an eyelid primer 
like when this thing was first getting hyped up and now it is available as of yesterday I think in Morphe stores which is really cool so if I ever go to Orlando and I go to the Morphe store I'll probably try to like swatch it see what I think of it I'm not the biggest fan in the world of like really thick high coverage eyelid primers. I love just using concealer on my lid. I bought the Anastasia eyelid primer. Not a fan. So I want to try the P. Louise because if it's like the perfect base and makes colors pop, of course I want to try that. But for me, it's not something I have to have to have immediately. So there's no rush for me to try this brand. You know, but like they have cool colors now. I think that's pretty fun. Next up is Lethal Cosmetics, and this is something I've wanted to try forever because their shadows look so pretty, and I love the little square pans with the indention in the center. It looks really cute. But the reason I haven't bought from Lethal Cosmetics is I just don't reach for singles that often. I know you can build your own palette with it, but it gets kind of pricey, and I know it's an indie brand, so of course it is going to be a little more expensive, which is fine. But, like, I don't really reach for singles, and I'm not sure I'm the best at building my own palette. Like, of course I try, and sometimes I make mock-ups of palettes, but for me, I'm not sure... Like, what kind of color combination I'd want to make with the singles. So I just haven't bought from Lethal Cosmetics yet. Because I'd want to buy a full palette. And that's a little bit pricey at the moment. Also, I don't want to sound like this is me complaining that I haven't bought from these brands. I'm not. I just think it's interesting to see, like, what brands we all try and which ones we don't. Because I'm sure some of these brands that I'm mentioning in this video, a lot of you guys love. They're probably your favorite brand you have everything from. But I think it's really interesting because I freaking love things like ColourPop and a lot of you guys haven't tried it. So it's interesting to see which ones we reach for, which ones we have, and which ones we haven't tried. So I'd love to know yours down below as well. The next brand is Andy Candy. Um, makeup. Andy Candy Makeup has like this really cute cupcake palette and the reason I haven't bought from this brand is I was gonna buy the cupcake palette but it opens the wrong way. Like a palette usually opens up, this one opens down so you have the eyeshadow and then you have the lid underneath and that's just really bizarre to me. I feel like it's wrong in every single way possible and I hate the way it opens. So personally I would buy the Andy Candy Cupcake Palette because it's so cute and I love the color story on the inside but it's just the packaging is completely wrong for me and really boggles my mind of why they made it like that. So it's not for me. Maybe their next products they come out with will be like make more sense to me a little bit because the color story is really cute and everything is aesthetically pleasing. Next up is Storybook Cosmetics. I've seen this in person and they look really pretty, but they're a little bit bulky and none of the themes they've had so far are something I have to have. Now, if there was something like, okay, so Storybook, if you don't know, has like Mean Girls palette, has like, I think it's a Hogwarts palette or something. They have like a bunch of Storybook Cosmetics and it's really, really cute and they invented like those, I think they invented them anyways, like the Harry Potter brush set and stuff. It was really adorable. But for me, none of the themes have really like stuck out as something I have to have, especially for it kind of being like a display piece. It's not necessarily just an eyeshadow palette. It is kind of for the aesthetics and you want to kind of put it on a shelf. But nothing so far has really intrigued me to the point where I have to have it. I really wish Storybook would like combine with Besame. That'd be amazing. Like if they both made a Sleeping Beauty collection together, I'd die. That'd be beautiful. So I love the aesthetics of it. It's a brand that's a little bit expensive. But I would definitely purchase from them if they had a theme that I really, really enjoyed. Next up is Sugar Rush. And this is the sister brand to Tarte. So Tarte Cosmetics has like a skincare. It's not really skincare. It's still kind of makeup-y stuff. They have like a sister cutesy brand called Sugar Rush. And I have swatched in store and like smelt a bunch of the Sugar Rush products. But I've never purchased it. Because it all feels artificial. If you know what I'm saying. Makeup is already artificial as it is. But like the body butter and stuff, it smells great. You rub it into your skin. It smells so fake and plasticky. Everything about the brand is just kind of cutesy for the sake of cutesy. Some of the brushes, do not get me wrong, I want those brushes from Sugar Rush. But everything else is just kind of like, it's like the kids section of Tarte, if you know what I'm saying. It's just kind of cutesy, kind of gimmicky. It's a bunch of lip balms and stuff and glitter highlights and stuff. And I don't really need any of that. So I'd rather just reach for regular Tarte over Sugar Rush. Next up is Lip Bar, and I've personally never seen Lip Bar in person, so that's why I haven't been intrigued. I don't follow their Instagram page enough to really get into it and, like, go after it and try it. I've seen, like, when I was reaching, researching for this video, like, looking through the brands I follow and which ones I haven't tried, a lot of things on the Lip Bar page look really cute. But I personally have never seen it in person and never remember enough to try the brand or look it up to purchase it. Next up is Hourglass, and the reason I haven't tried Hourglass is money. That seems expensive. Samantha Ravendahl seems to love Hourglass, and a lot of people love Hourglass products, like their highlighters and their foundation, 
but to me it seems really expensive and I don't really know if it's worth like shaking up my wallet just to see if something's revolutionary because there's so many more affordable products lately that yes I would love to try Hourglass right because it sounds fancy and I'm sure the products are great quality but at the same time I'm not sure how worth it'd be so I'm not sure I am interested in trying them I'm sure their products are great maybe one day I'll try one of their products and I'll fall in love but as of right now I don't think I need anything that bad from them and lastly is a brand I have a huge crush on. I can't explain it. I cannot explain it. And at least once a month, I will go and I'll make my cart full on their website and it'll just sit there. And I just look at it and I'm like, mm, I can't justify this. And it's Nabla Cosmetics. Again, like Zoeva, something about the aesthetic of this brand I absolutely adore and I cannot get over. I don't know what it is. But Nabla and Zoeva are both just beautiful nothing revolutionary again with this brand Nabla is not revolutionary the colors are very boring but they have some cute palettes that look kind of cool tone with a lot of the mattes and I really like that so I don't know Nabla is one of those aesthetic brands that I want to try really bad but I just can't justify it so anyways thank you guys so much for watching today's video that is a whole bunch of brands that I've never tried personally please let me know what your favorite of these brands is down below as well as a popular makeup brand that you've never tried because I would love to know thank you guys so much for watching if you're not subscribed to my channel I'd love to have you here and I will see you in the next video bye guys